All right, y'all ready? It's ready as will ever be. You're gonna do fine. So <laughs> you're gonna do fine. It's so not. Tired. It's yeah. not like you're sitting on critical role and you gotta be perfect and everyone's judging. Stay in the back. Cast your spells. So, okay. Yeah. All right. We are picking up. Y'all are waking up in the tents in the Vistani camp that y'all were at after saving Arabelle. You hear the party in the, you know, you wake up smelling bacon and, and breakfast and the livery that's going on in the tent city up the up on the top of the hill. Um, you can hear the voice of Argal and Lavash echoing through the camp. They're having a conversation. As you step out of the camp, out of your tent, Arabelle comes running up with a huge smile and just kind of jumps into Belcar's arms and says, Good morning! Good morning! Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are y'all today? Good. Morning. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember y'all a more talking than last time. <laughs> <laughs> My dad said there's plenty of breakfast for y'all. And is there coffee? There is coffee. Mm-hmm. We like our coffee and wine. And that one casually runs down the stairs at the speed of light. Just... So you go, <laughs> into the, you go into the main tent. Lavash gives you a hearty welcome. You see table piled up with food and drink. And you see the brother, Argal, over, over off to the side. And he's just kind of watching y'all. Arabella jumps out of um, Belcar's arms. And she actually goes over and she jumps on her uncle's lap, throws her arms around him. You can tell he's very receptive, that he's very close with his niece. All right, so what are y'all doing? I'm stopping my face full of food and wine. It's always wine! (laughs) And from, from from the side of the room, you hear Arabella yell out, I wouldn't drink that if I were you. Uh oh. <laughs> you missed up. And then she kind of giggles. Uh oh. You missed up. Now don't tell me it's another pie situation. She can tell the truth, like, for the future, right? Is that what it was? Or, what's oh, worse? Yeah. 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 She can she like, what's worse is that it could be one that belongs to, like, the family. Only the family is drinking, and she is drinking some of it. So, so you kind of look at her, like, and you look at the drink, and then you look back at her, and she kind of giggles. She's like, I'm just kidding. What? You're about to I'll trust you. Not a single bit. Well, to be honest, with most dandy bars, like, at the bar, you can get it. Oh, you'd be the one doing the roofie. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So we got like a like thousand gold for rescuing this shit, right? So here's the point. We kidnap her and we rescue her. <laughs> please, please remember that she likes to put curses on people. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not in the game. I'm going to grab a little bit of coffee or a yeah. couple bites of food. I'm going to go ahead and head off. Sorry. Uh, a right. second of the So as you're walking out of the tent... You see the dusk elf that you've seen the first time you approached the camp. And he is walking with his two partners, his other two guards. And they have a third elf that looks to be a a male high elf with them that they're bringing up to the higher tent to, to go to take to Lavash. However, this was just the three elves that you recognize as the dusk elves don't exactly seem standoffish. Their attitude is almost the same as when 
Y'all were brought before Lavash. Um, just guarded, but not on high alert. Obviously, this individual has come up to the camp or has been brought to the camp in one way, and they're bringing them to Lavash. I know she's going to completely ignore the elf. Would you, uh, <laughs> would you accompany me outside oh, to talk with these, uh, messengers? Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm outside. Yes, I'll come I figured it, having an offer with me would be more relatable to the okay. <laughs> So, the, the elf that, the, the dusk elf that seems to be over the other two, <clears throat> He sees you approach. He can tell that you're wanting to maybe start a conversation. And he tells you, if you want to talk to us, we'll be down the hill in just a few minutes. The Vistani have just brought somebody in from outside Barovia and we want to bring them to a wash to see what he wants to do about this one. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to follow closely behind. And when they get to the tent to bring this new elf to the boss, we're going to kind of eavesdrop a bit. Let's go with the talk. I follow. All right. <laughs> so the elf that is in question, he seems like he is somewhat confused. He keeps saying something along the lines of one minute he was safe and sound and now he woke up in a mist and he does not know where he's at and how he got here and who these people are and what the heck is going on. And he is brought to the tent and Lavash approaches. Lavash puts on his, his stern leader face and he says, so Pastor Poole brought another one. Who the heck are you? I am Arlo. Arlo. Arlo, how did you get here? That I do not know. What do you know? Where are you from? Last thing I remember, I was just hanging out, and then I woke up and got awfully confused, and now I'm here. <laughs> I travel a lot naturally, so it's not an unpleasant surprise to end up here. It's just unexpected. I travel. Yes. Are you an adventurer? Yeah. So, Lavash looks from... Arlo, this high elf, and he looks at your group, or at least at Velcar and Kodiak, because I think, okay. Um, and he says, you yeah, already got one problem off of my hands. You want another one? I think we should ask the group real quick. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> Of course, bring her on and him. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're just a cleanup crew. <laughs> As I said last time, it's your problem now. <laughs> Have fun. It's after a rough week. Are you a stranger? Interesting. Should we get your whole back to the moon That's what you're doing. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your name? Well, you see. I'm not going to say that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I like you making a mistake. Yeah, I remember that. I'm like, <laughs> I just want to know who the hell you are. <laughs> I just want to know your name. Crawl. <laughs> so, so, 
it's part of her party now. You are standing there, and y'all are looking at this high elf, and he's looking at y'all like, whoa. <laughs> Days. How much yeah. Free food, my dude. Can they ever bring us some emails? Yeah, it's working on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And you, you hear Arabelle go, he's a cleric. You need him. Fact. But she's a cleric, too. You need her. And she kind of giggles. <laughs> She's a cleric. Are we still referring to the same thing? Yeah. All right. He's everything. I think I'm going to see if there's anything you haven't done before in my travels, so I already know what she is. Oh, um, okay. But I'm not going to pull that. Stuff me out. I'm just going to munch out food and get some coffee. What, what is she? <laughs> like, when... You'll have to figure it out. He's <laughs> an elf. Staring. He's a high elf. It's what are you guys doing on your travels? Everything's in the castle. Yeah, we're trying to murder five <laughs> months ago. <laughs> yeah, super deadly. Kills every single person that's ever gone after him. It's a really good time. There would be more than something in the double. Uh, it. I'll do it. <laughs> 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 I travel basically anywhere and everywhere looking for my brethren. I've yet to find them. And yeah, I just move place to place very often. I don't. Alright, so despite the morning's uh, craziness, mm -hmm. I'm heading back to the I'm going to go down the path to where the dust girl's fucking. Alright. So, <laughs> as, as you walk down to the, the row of houses, the circle of houses, you see these three figures and you approach the one that you take to be the leader of these three. And he stands before you. He's got long black hair framing his dusky colored face. He's got a patch over one eye. The elongated features of his face, the graceful movement that he makes, hints to you that he is indeed of the elven race. However, as you kind of look at him more closely, you quickly realize that he completely lacks the ears that are distinguished of an elf. Does that have one ears? Well, in fact, he has no ears at all. Wow. Where his, while his hair hides most of the damage, you notice scarring visible oh, in so his you place. <laughs> Correct. Um, he holds himself at a, in a graceful stature, yet the look in his eye staring back at you as you walk up to him betrays years of grief and torture that he has seen. Poor bastard. Why so serious? Belkar, Kodiak, well met. I am Casimir Belkov. Not at all. But curiosity's got the better of me. Just notice that uh, you guys are a little uh, unusual. Unusual. <laughs> I was just curious. Uh, you were, where you came from? Well, I'm from here in Barovia, long before it was Barovia. In fact, I am probably the oldest resident of Barovia, even far older than the man that calls himself Strahd. 
So you were here before. So the drugs with power. Most definitely. What was it like before? This was a great place. My people were plentiful. Then Shrod came. You see, the result. Has this place always been so detached from, I should say, everywhere else? No. There was a time in my very distant memory that people came and went, traveled to lands unknown today. Um, it, it wasn't always as it is now. <laughs> At this point, my character moseyed down near their conversation, not close, just like leaning on the wall. Kind of just tossing it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. kind of yeah eavesdropping. Who's the baby? We're just going to. Alright, I will lean right next to her character. <laughs> 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 Those two are always like. I ask him, hello, what happened to you? <laughs> oh, it's appropriate for me to ask. Well, I've lived with them all these years. I don't think of it that often. But if you have the time, I have the story to tell. Oh, that's a <laughs> I scooch a little bit. Because for an elf to lose its ears, as you can imagine, is a big deal. It totally destroys who we are at some deep, deep level. It's a story. It is a story. And. That was actually for a and it's a story of family, of my people, and the day that our future is completely destroyed. destroyed. See, I was the oldest of three siblings that was first me, and my brother is there. And following us was my sister, Katrina, a beautiful girl, Katrina. Spades would have it before an army invaded our homeland. Led by a man who referred to himself as Lord Shrod. Katrina admired her despite the fact that he was the enemy of our people. Our people fought very bravely, but in the end, when faced with our complete extinction, our people, her people, surrendered. Strahd placed all the Dusk Elves' destiny in the hand of the clan of the Bastani. They led all of us into a valley near the Balanoc Mountains. And there, Petrina continued her search for power, soon discovering an existence of a temple in the mountains. She saw this as her advantage. So when the opportunity to leave the encampment rose, she snuck out. She headed over to Castle Ravenlock. Once she arrived, she was greeted by a man by the name of Rahadin. Now, Rahadin was also a dark elf, one that our people knew that we assumed he had been killed. Rahadin led her into the castle and introduced her to Lord Strahd. Well, was some attraction between the two of them. They met twice more before Strahd, satis before Strahd satisfied that uh, Petrina had told him all that she knew about the temple headed to the mountains to seek it out. Petrina didn't hear about, didn't hear back from them for a few weeks when a Vastana handed her a note. According to this note, Strahd had found the temple and he would tell her more when he was able. However, his beloved mother, Queen Ravenovia, did not survive the journey from his ancestral home to the castle. The note went on to say that his younger brother, Sergei, however, 
did survive the trek and the two had much to discuss together. More time passed and Petrina didn't hear anything from Strella. However, rumors were heard of an engagement between his brother to Tatiana, a younger woman from the village of Barovia. More rumors spoke of a tragedy at the wedding between the two, resulting in the death of Sergi, Tatiana, and Lord Strahd. However, the rumors of his return followed closely on the heels of his demise. The news was, although he died, he is not dead, but he drinks blood in order to sustain his life. The attraction between Strahd and Katrina reignited and they grew over their following encounters. In her mind, a marriage to Strahd was the only way to share that power. And Strahd agreed to the marriage agreement and then sealed the agreement with a bite to her neck, feeding off of her blood. Don't worry, brother, is all she would say. But I did worry. I was the leader of our people. It was my job to look for their security, and she was my sister. My worry grew as she left for long periods of time. And then her behavior began to change. So one night, I had her followed. My scouts returned, and the news was exactly what I feared. My sister had been charmed by Strahd. She plotted to sacrifice one of our children and drink their blood in order to complete the pact and transform to vampirism. She was a threat to the safety of my people. I met with the other leaders and presented my concerns and they came to an agreement that actions must be taken in order to save her soul and prevent further harm. She had to be killed. She never imagined the wine that I offered to her would be poisoned. So we took her into the woods. And per our tradition, each one of us threw a stone at Petrina until she died. That's one of the girl like that. <laughs> she died. Throwing it. Don't Dang. Dang. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> The, the execution was at dawn, and before night fell that night, Strahd descended on our people, demanding that we hand over Petrina's body. After placing her broken corpse into his carriage, he dealt the final blow of our punishment by slaughtering every woman and every child among us. Strahd had Petrina's body interred in a crypt underneath the castle right along. And though her body lay dead, her souls remained trapped in Strahd's realm. Due to its unrest, her soul manifests itself as a banshee. As for Rahadi, he's the one that cut off my ears and took my eye. He wanted to remind me that the elves were over with. And as their leader, I was nothing. He takes a, a few moments and he looks at each of y'all and he says, do you know of a Madam Eva yes. in these lands? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. She's actually a friend of ours. Well, if you have a moment more, there is a little bit left to this story. I've brought you from the past to the present, but there's more to the present than what I've told. Over a century ago, Katrina came to me in my dream. Her first appearance was very brief, just long enough to call out my name. There was no mistaking it was her, I know her voice. 
Um, and then months pass before she appeared again. And now she comes to me pretty regularly. She tells me that she was a victim. She was corrupted by Strahd's evil magic and charmed by his terrible nature that death has freed her from Strahd's influence, that her soul is forever trapped in the crypts beneath the castle. She regrets her actions and the harm that she did to her people. In these dreams, she promises power, and power enough perhaps to raise her back to life, power to even defeat the Count himself. They led me to a frozen base at Mount Gacchus, where I spotted the crumbling edifice of an ancient structure. And I have no doubt it's the temple that Petrina found and that she guided Straw to. I know that alone, I will likely be unable to explore the structure and survive. However, Madame Eva once told me that a group of adventurers would come to Barovia and would be able to assess me. I know, just from what I've heard with y'all talking to Lavash, that you have much more pressing matters at the moment. However, I do beg that you might in the future return to me and together we might go to this temple, which I now call the Amber Temple, and see if there's a way to raise my sister from death and live to see Strahd. There is a way. There, 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 there is a way. Maybe not the way you like it. <laughs> there is a way. Let me ask you a question. Yes. 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 You said that you were told that the group of adventurers would come. Yes. And you would know this tells you that they're not all. Yes. How many before us have you told the same story? <laughs> You're the first ones to ever ask. So only y'all. Mm. Oh. I'll, I'll be honest. The other adventures that have come through, and not all adventures come to the Hastani camp here, but of the ones that have come, not many pay much attention to a small group of the Dusk Elves. I'll buy his answer for now, but it's not something I'm going to shape in the back of my head. Right now, that's what I have to do with. James said, drink some more water. Uh, maybe grit gets me to kill Strahd. Yeah. <laughs> get some stone. I was going to get stone that during the story. I will say that when we have less pressing matters at hand, that. Well, I will return and have you lead me to this temple that you speak of. And you shall investigate it together. But I will hold no promises and doubts. You will be able to resurrect your lost sister. So all I ask is for your party to accompany me to the Amber Temple. Perhaps during this time before we go, you might want to ask yourself. Is it a good idea to resurrect your sister in the first place? So is a question I ask myself for the last century now, so... Well... I know you are currently in Velaki, right? What is your adventure at right now? That's not something I want to talk about, but it's strange. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'll just simply say, uh, right now we are assisting at the Festival of the Sun, Milwaukee. That is our current uh, mission as of right now. Afterwards, maybe we can talk later. Uh, possibly going up and visiting this temple that we speak of. Outside of that, I can't take all the information. You do know that the Astani have ears everywhere, do you not? Maybe so. 
my understanding is that you travel with the daughter of the Burgermaster. Possibly. Possibly not. I will tell you that Irina is not safe in the Lockheed. Well, if we just happen to be with someone other, why would she not be safe at all? Velaki is not as impervious to straw as they seem to think they are. I could have told you that. <laughs> <laughs> There are threats in that town that you might not see yet. We did leave Ava. Yeah, Ava's. Okay. Okay. We're going back. So there was some talk of leaving her by herself. I I know that Irina. I do know the young lady you travel with. I know she is an important person. I know she is important to Strahd. And I think that answers your question what her permission is. Um, I will offer up a safe haven to Irena. Safe haven to y'all. He looks especially at Elf One. <laughs> elf Two. <laughs> Point five. <laughs> Point five. <laughs> Elves will always be welcomed here. But I will also offer sanctuary to y'all if and when you find that Blocky is not safe. We'll say I'm not an elf, but I can't stop. And I'm not an elf, I used to be an elf. What do you used to be here? Yeah, true. I can say I used to be an elf. You used to be a woman. Before you got brother baby. Talk. Before you got brother baby. Just uh, walked around the room and said, Hey, how you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm just excited at hearing that we will be traveling soon. She's ready to fight shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, boy. Okay, so what are y'all doing? She might still have been back. I'm still in the tent. I'm still in the tent. We're up against a tree. We're being the cool kids. Yeah, you guys are making a story spot. Where was Beast? Beast. Actually, so the sister wasn't a vampire yet when they murdered five or something. She made straw weakness in the rocks. Maybe we can bless rocks, but we make them work. We throw her out. <laughs> throw garlic on the rocks. <laughs> We're not throwing rocks at It could work. I'm just trying to say. Throw limbs at them. You can throw rocks at bats. Something that's already going to be getting dirty. <laughs> no, we're not trying Ross. I'm not trying. I mean, you can try, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can try. It's focusing. All right, Cashmere, why are you so confident that you guys can defend Irina better? We can, we can definitely defend her better having us here with her than her just being alone. Next question, how much garlic do you guys have? To be honest, though, I mean, like, the stoning still work strong, though. Mm -hmm. So, not... You will find that not all the Astani are loyal or even um, work at all for Strahd. In this camp alone, there are some who do work for Strahd that like to work for Strahd. You will find those that do 
Strahd's bidding, not on their own volition, but because they have to. And you will find those that have absolutely nothing to do with Strahd. Fair enough. I will tell you that the leader of this camp falls into that latter category. I petition and go back to uh, Irene. Yeah, oh, yeah. Same, ditto. Yeah, because we got the call the group. We got the holiday party coming. Yeah, we have the festival coming up. Um, there's the church that we can go to. There's the windmill, of course. How about there's... we go back to town soon because we have a fucking festival. But we also need to sell a bunch of shit that we've got. Yeah, 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 we have a lot of Fixian. <laughs> Roll me a oh. constitution check. Constitution? Yep. What do you do? Check out. Wow. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got Roll me a constitution check. Which is a C20? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Far, far away. What are you doing? I'm doing. Okay. 16. Hey, I'm still doing the play. Ah! Annette, you are sitting there after the nice breakfast that was provided by Lavash, the coffee, and the bacon and eggs, or sausages. You were quite content with that. And you notice that for you, You don't think about pie today. You really are happy with what you ate, especially the coffee. And and you think that you might be able to function today without the pie. Um, Fix the end. I'm screwed. (laughs) <laughs> no way, you, you, however, are fucked. <laughs> the the food just did not seem right for you. You are left wanting. The wanting is eating you up inside. And then you remember. The old lady who sold you the pies mentioned that if you ever needed pies, her daughters also sell the pies from the windmill. Is that a hint hint rest of the windmill today? Yeah, we can get more pies. And now Your focus is on nothing more than going to the windmill and getting pies. I'm the third floor. I'm sitting on my own. I'm more than going to follow the wall. We're going to follow the crack at it. Let's go get some pies. The field trip. I'm going to get some pies. And a bunch of shit, yeah. I bring a bag, just cars. I've only known you for a day, but I'm worried for you. <laughs> so, you must convince your party okay. why you should go get pie versus going to the town that the rest of them would like. Talk among yourselves. Thank you, Margaret. You're the boss, bro. That's true. You like Margaritas? I'm going to see you. You're going to have to go to the I mean, okay. Who wants to go? Go back to the city, and who wants to go to the um, windmill? I do. I want more time. I'm going for windmill. I 
I'm gonna follow the left. Okay, hold on. Alright, all right, so we're all going to win real fast. <laughs> City by himself. <laughs> Alright. Uh, uh, right. Alright, where the hell is it? I tried to all right so then y'all leave the Vistani camp behind with your new companion in tow you walk through the woods and Belcar yes. please roll me a D <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nat 12. As I said, I'd like to apologize for the group. Hey, but just, this just gives us an opportunity to teach our newest members. Alright, you ready to fight? Because it's about to happen. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is not, this is not a situation where you want to roll on it. Huh? These will be roofed. Yeah. So it's just taking a nice four. So what the fuck? This is my backyard. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so we're gonna roll the dice. Oh, yeah. 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 So I got to dive down the other end. So you can teleport in this one. Where are we? Our little man. Oh my god, our little people! Yeah, I found a fireball, so we'll touch my hands on fire. Listen, if you want to make your own, like, mine, the yeah. custom name, so is Annette. Mm-hmm. Alright, Hero 4, yeah, what are you talking about? But Hero 4 is really cool. You can go in, you can, uh, you, got some you can go in and, uh, kind of try out what colors you want. To yeah. 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 So, I went on there, but then my phone was being rude, so I realized that. Yeah, exactly. Today's episode is sponsored by Hero Forge. <laughs> Everybody, first tree roll of the day. Roll for initiative. All right. Anybody? First of all, where are we? How do we get here? You. Right into it. You were walking down the trail, as I said. <laughs> will be. Can I have this... a description of this fantastic trail? He wants to know. You are trails. down the very exact trail you've been down three times now. It's covered with woods <laughs> and trees. I know that's what we're wondering about. Is there trees up in the So, <laughs> anybody roll 20 or above? 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 15, 14, all right. (laughs) 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 12 or 13. 12, oh, yeah. Sorry, I added it. 11, 10. Somebody need to tell me. And Halo. And Halo. And you. Yeah. Yes. Let me finish, yeah. Uh, 9, 8, okay. Pick a number 1 through 5. Oh, no. I'm no, six. he, yeah, he did. Um, oh, you're 6? What were you? I'm 8. eight. You were an eight? Yeah. He played eight. 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 All right, so eight, seven, six. The screen's oh. getting full there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, or Halo got a five and Vix got a four. All right, I don't know what All right, All right now go ahead and give your uh, oh, PSA. Yeah, so um, since we're level five here, all of us martial classes can attack twice now. Yeah, I see. So how do you how do you do that? Do you say I can attack twice? You attack twice, so you'll take an attack roll. If it hits, you give your damage, and you do another one right away. Okay, so attack roll. I'm sure you do All right, Cody. As y'all are walking through the woods, out jumps three wolves. You hear their padded feet as they're coming through the brush. And before you know it, the three of them are surrounding you. You are up first. This one, don't. 
assault the wolves with your arrows. Oh, we got 16. 16? 16 is a hit. Cool. Uh, so now I'll roll on. Which wolf did you have? Uh, the first one. Okay, so one. So you hit the wolf. It yelps and howls and starts spinning around in a circle. And you can tell it is hurt. Velcar, you were up. Oh, second to uh, I'm sorry. It's a hit. Yeah. 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 Two plus three is one. Five. There you go. So we got five. Man. How do you want to do this? Two wolves. Mm-hmm. As this wolf is spinning around in circles, Kodiak takes aim and lets the arrow fly, and it hits just at the right moment, enters one side, and comes out the other like a piercing sticking out. The wolf yelps in pain and collapses and dies. Don't forget to take the heads, guys. Okay, cool. Um, Velcar. Velcar. I won't be climbing the tree this time. Oh, joy. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to uh, roll to attack with uh, my longbow. All right. Oh, my God. Some bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't count. Uh, I doubt they have the armor class is higher than 11. Did you get 11? Yes. It's a hit. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, waiting for that right there. I got my, oh, my. I'm proficient with uh, well. 11 is a hit. Okay, so one big one more. Okay, so we're going to do. Five points of damage in the first attack. All right. Are you on wolf number two? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to target wolf number three. Okay. And I'm going to go for an attack on wolf number three. Oh, oh yeah. So I rolled a 14 right off the bat. So that's the thing. That's going to be a hit. I have a question. See, I always felt like I killed him. So it's very disadvantaging. It was the first game I and for the damage roll, so it's going to be a 10, it's important to damage. All right. All right, so that's the end of your turn. Wolf number one, or number two, is going to go for a bite on... <laughs> on on Kodiak. Uh, and it is going to be a hit. And not only is it a hit, but it is a critical. Oh, that's embarrassing. Yeah, there we go. What? Yeah, we can teach her how she to use spells easy spell for help. Yes. All right. I'm dead. So Cody is dead. Similarly, I'm dead. Dead. The wolves are just beating the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> so just lay there. Lay there. She's gonna heal you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. All right. So you take. Oh, yeah. Wait, is it take 12 points of damage. Jesus Christ. Ah, damn. Wolf number three is going to go after Halo. Yes, please. 
It does not tip. Arlo. Welcome to the game. Yeah. You were up. Okay. Uh, yeah. You take all the time you need to figure okay, yeah. it out. Yes. So, yeah, I'm going to use cure wounds. And then I roll it once. And, yes. Oh, that's great. Uh, I said eat five, so it's two plus three. Yeah, five. So you got five plus five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not great. Uh, that's okay. It's five he didn't have. That's not fair. Thank you. All right. Annette. You are up. There are two wolves. Which wolf are you attacking? I'm about to attack the one that attacked you. So number two. I got 14. 14 is a hit. Two plus four. Two plus four, six. I do six point of damage on all two. Annette. How do I want to do this? What's, How would you like to do this? What's the most? What's the most? Okay, not every death has to be. You just convince him to kill himself. <laughs> yeah, sometimes wolves are just wolves. Yeah. Well, but he just rolled like runs out of the place. I gotta take, I gotta, uh, can I do anything? All right. So Annette takes flight, she launches into the sky, and as she takes aim, she shouts out, Leroy Jenkins! And lets the arrow go, and it hits the wolf, and it splatters. That's the best I could do for you. How's that sound? All right, Annette, you get to roll a second time. Yeah, you get to attack twice. Nineteen. Nineteen is a hit. Okay, that's a hit regardless. And that. How do you want to do this? Thanks to me. I softened it up for you. So she takes aim and the arrow flies true and we have a third dead pupper. So I need Annette, Velcor, and Kodiak because you used arrows, right? Go ahead and roll for your arrow recovery. So... I proposed, and the DM said this is good. DM's good with this. Roll a d20. Mm -hmm. 10 or lower, you get half your arrows back. Anything higher, you get one. Anything lower than Anything higher than 10. I got 10. Okay. So you get all your arrows. I got two. So you get one arrow back, you get two arrows back, you get one arrow back. And I'm going to assume you collect. Heads. Make sure you write that down so y'all know how many heads y'all have to turn back in. Three heads. Exhausted. All right. So. Oh, girly things. I'm gonna go, or the team is gonna go up to uh, Claudia and do a level two cure wounds. Okay. Try to check something. I pray for nothing but bread. Alright, you get plus eight back. Careful. Yeah. Plus if I go above, 
my desire to hold. It does not roll it over. Just, it goes all right so you'll make your way down the trail as Dixian's stomach grumbles and his mouth salivates at the thought of pies that are waiting at the end of this trail you can enter down the old Spouch Road through a winding path, a lazy trail that hugs the mountainside and descends into a, a fog-filled valley. In the heart of the valley, you see the wall town near the lake, the town of Velaki. A branch of the road leads west atop which you see on a hill a dilapidated stone windmill its warped wooden veins stripped bare what <laughs> the, the, the toilet in the bathroom is like oh, is that what the shitter's broke shitter's clogged shitter's full it's your time to shine. Go, go, go. So, <laughs> so this one's featured in a burger. That's why I'm calling it all. I said, I may have many flavors. Well, many flavors. All right. What was that? I think I was just... It, it was ocean noise. It's trying to flush it. Get out of here. All right. So up on the top of the hill... You see this windmill, and Thixian's stomach just goes. Urgh. Is there any outhouses or wells? Not this time. I <laughs> think that. So we had the, we had the four one time the whole map. Is it like, well? I think that I see what I'm I kind of scope out the people more than this environment. All right. So what are y'all doing? She's hanging back. We're all here because of this one. We're gonna go up to the windmill and see if I can fuck the pies. Big, 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 big pie. So, as you get closer, the onion domed edifice leans forward into one side, as though trying to turn away from the stormy gray sky. You see a gray brick walls and dirt covered windows on the upper floor, a decrepit wooden platform encircling the windmill above a flimsy doorway leading to the building's interior. Perched on the window beam above the door is a raven. And as you get closer, you notice this raven looks kind of different. Rather than just glossy black wings, you notice some blue and white upon its feathers. Just colors. Then it hops about and it watches you. I like furries. Just a single raven? Just a single raven. <laughs> it says your feathers might be worth something. <laughs> you make great fletching for my hair. Just... Yo, no, we're not killing birds. We're not killing these birds. <laughs> so, the bird turns and sets its eyes upon you. <laughs> <laughs> Day two. I do and it gives you a loud squawk <laughs> as if it's saying, fuck you, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> and then it takes off in flight. Safe to say he's not a friend. <laughs> 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 So I'm not, 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 I'm not
Oh. Give me a constitution oh. check. For D12? D20. Yeah, awesome. D20. Yeah. And then of course. 19, let's go, bird, eat my shit. Water <laughs> 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 Oh my We're all idiots. <laughs> cheek. You grab the line, you grab my cheek. <laughs> 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 this is going to hurt me a lot more than it hurts you. Oh god, the bird goal goes home. This bird had it out for from the get-go. I have already said that if you guys end up getting us into a fight that's not necessary one, and you guys get hurt. That's why we got a cleric. We can never die. I will say that too. Unless I do. I could be. Plus, we have an animal. If you die, I could bring you back. I don't want to. I'm a cleric. He's like the very last All right, so continue it. All right, so the bird flew off. Y'all are close to the. Windmill. Are there people? There is nobody outside. Is there However, as the wind drifts your direction, the smell, the aroma of pie hits you. Because I know I can't do anything about it. <laughs> Alright, we'll uh, yeah, we'll go inside the window of course with high smell. Alright, so we went inside. So you you walk up to the door of the windmill and you find the door is locked. But you hear movement inside. May I suggest that you find the two ends? I have fireballs. No. I mean, not from the doors. Hold on, sir. I suppose I shall do that. All right. So you knock on the door and you hear a, an elderly voice. I'm coming. One moment, one moment. Let me pull these out of the oven first. <laughs> you hear some, what sounds like the oven being opened, something being placed upon a counter or a table, the oven door closing, and you hear her again. I'm coming. Just one moment. You hear the the door as it's unlocked, and you see a woman. She is elderly. She is not as old as the woman that you encountered back in the village of Barovia. Um, the woman that identified herself as Granny. But she is an older woman. It's not hard to imagine that this could be the daughter of that other woman. And she looks at you and she says, yes, dear, what can I do for you? This is all your mother's fault. I need pie. Oh, yes. I have plenty of pie. I just brought a new batch out of the oven. I have fruit. And I also have some more savory. Do come in, come in. All of y'all, feel free to come in. Yes. Yes. I need my time. You, you're, you've already broken the oven. I, I have the front. Oh, she's not broken. She's just not. Feeling its effects today. Yeah. She's not. I just want it because it tastes so good. So she she pushes the door all the way open. 
she walks back into the room, allowing you to follow after her. Yeah. I ask her what's up with the crow. <laughs> no. Oh, those birds. They're just your typical pests. They're everywhere. That I am. I don't know the bird in particular. Alright, I'm gonna pull Velcar aside. With that little power. And Kodiak, fuck it, why not? Alright, and this one. I guess it's not a big surprise. I'll let them distract me. Alright, so we're all gonna go outside. I have a plan. I can't cure this evil. <laughs> Alright, so I have an ability, right? Friends. I can, for <laughs> I, can, I can force her to tell us what's up with the pie, right? But, yeah, right. But we can find out exactly what's up if there's a cure, so we'll always have to worry about the pie. Side effect, she wants to murder us after the effect, so I you know. Then no, why don't we just ask this thing? She doesn't seem malicious. She's an asshole. She feeds drug pies. I think we should probably just add not to <laughs> yeah. I like one permission before you want to touch the letters. Yeah. yeah, we don't even that know. Forcing her to be our friends could be a light. Being said, said. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Too many murders already. Right. Right. <laughs> 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 I feel like an episode of like, Kid Eric. Tony and Kidnapped Store where the sweet old lady that gives you cookies and cakes just wants to fast fatten you up and eat these things. Exactly. I'm going to start going back inside Palo. 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 I'm going to start going back I just want to say everybody interacting, talking so much. I need pie. I need pie too. Following the old lady. So you follow inside. She puts you in the So you come into um, a kitchen area. The ground floor has been converted to this kitchen, but the room is absolutely filthy. Oh, God. <laughs> Baskets and old dishware are piled up everywhere. Adding to, to the clutter is a, a peddler's cart. There's a chicken coop inside. A big heavy wooden trunk. Uh, a pretty wooden cabinet with flowers painted on the door, which kind of sticks out like a sore thumb in the in the rubbish. In addition to the clucking of the chickens in the coop, you can also hear toads croaking. But the sweet, sweet aroma of the pastries, even blended with the horrible stench that burns your nostrils from the nastiness, just makes your mouth water. For the rest of you, the awful odor coming out of this these open, upright barrels that are in the center of the room is just assaulting your nose. The warmth issue issued from the, the oven against one wall, and then there's a crumbling staircase that ascends the other wall across from it and every so often you hear some shrieks and some cackles of laughter that come somewhere higher up ah. the laughter is is so loud and cackling it almost makes the walls of the windmill shudder so basically we're in a cloud of oh no yay I'm gonna take this opportunity to like, pop along out so there are toads in there. I want to more, like, you know, hang out with some toads, get his, you know, he's a, he's a guy. He's a friend. He, yeah, he's a friend. Yeah. You know, he travels along. He's too. Yeah. What's your toad's name? Pop along. Just a regular ass toad. Useless. Now, as, as y'all are kind of 
taking in the sights. You see the the woman walk over and she opens the oven, checks on the next set of pies that are cooking. And she says, so dearie, you said you would like some pie. Yes, please. Pies are one gold piece. <laughs> As she is only thinking of pies, and we have he, and we have hop along, hop along, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Checking out the other toads. What are the rest of y'all doing? So I, I will, the rest of the group, I'm kind of disturbed. Here's my whole piece. I want to find. I'm, I was like asking this fucking windmill, and there's like screaming and laughing coming from upstairs. So. Yeah. I once again I just found the same. Can I slip away while the old lady is busy getting this one pies? Want to slip away and start doing some investigation of what's going on? Okay, are you wanting to investigate the room you're currently in? Yes. Sorry. Okay, give me an investigation check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Uh, I, I, so you look around the barrels are definitely catching your attention. You know, something's off with them, but you're not able to get close enough yet without her noticing because they're right there by her. <laughs> but as you're looking in other areas, you notice there are some bones on the floor. Small bones, but bones. All right. Um, this is, uh, this body is inside the bones. They're going to possibly identify if they're what they belong to. Yes. Okay. So give me a medicine check. It's okay. I can roll I'm going to notice Belkar blankly staring at the bones in the corner, so I'm going to also do an investigator check on them, I guess. Yes. Is it D20? Okay. Yes. 19. Let's go. And plus whatever. Probably don't need it. Okay. So. Anyone see my other one that wasn't? Yeah, Velcar <laughs> Velcar notices these bones. And as he he looks at them but he can't quite make them out. And with day two right next to him, he's like hey, and motions for day two to come over. And you motion your head towards the bones and you give them a look like, what the fuck are these? <laughs> and day two looks at them. And day two mouths at you and says, those are the bones of children. Let's go. Those yes. are human children bones. So at this point, uh, Hop Along is uh, hopping on back to me, very scared. And crawls right up and it's all pouch that's on my head. And there's nestles on it, and he's done. I come inside. Even toes. I go upstairs. So there's. So I can go talk to the. I got. Okay, okay, give me a stealth check. Ooh. Hop along is not feeling the vibe. The vibes are not good. Hop along is not vibe. It's just late. Ooh, a plus six. It's coming to him. 13 plus six. It's grandma. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. As she has her back turned and is opening the oven to peek at the things, you quickly kind of stealthily go up the stairs and you make the turn and you see a, an opening to the, the next floor. You peek your head around and you see another woman. You can't tell if she's older or younger 
and she's up in her room. She is just cackling and laughing. And you see two cages on either side of the room. One contains a little boy and one contains a little girl. And she is reading a book and she's just cackling to herself. Punch her in the back of the head and then cuss. And then you beat her? I definitely walk up to her and then I her off so she doesn't. Okay. Give me a stealth check. Let's go. So the grandma's Bruce Lee does nothing. Yep. So as she is looking over the book, cackling to herself, Kodiak sneaks into the room. And as he sneaks up trying to come up from behind her, she stops laughing and you hear a voice that says, not so fast, Sonny. Do me a favor, everyone. No. Roll initiative. Why would you? You could have snuck back down and like got us all. We could have put the other one to sleep or something. What did you get? Thirteen. Yeah, I got Sometimes it's best to I'm trying to say these kids, y'all are fucking around with pies. I have, I've got to think who's who. Get that old hag out yeah, of here. Alright, so, Kodiak? Right um, what'd you get? That's 20. 20. You see what I'm going to get for you? I've got a 19. 40. Bro. All right. So. <laughs> and you were good <laughs> until. <laughs> For what he was trying to do? Not possible. About 32. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Well, I'm, 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 yeah, at the, at the crowd shop part, it'd probably be like an unarmed attack, right? So you have to roll for that. <laughs> Some ranger by fucking sure as hell. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you learn to work in the hard way. Hey, man, if I thought I'd die. You're trying to try and do something. I got Hold on. So we had 20, 19, 18. 17, 16. Uh, What'd you have? 15. 15. Wait, no. Good job. 14. <laughs> 14. Uh, Halo got a 13. I got a, I got a 15 and a 11. No. Or, sorry, 12. 15 got a 12. Halo got a 13. Yes. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> you got thirteen too. Anybody get eleven? Nine. Eight. What'd you get, Belcar? 
Then how come when I said eight, you didn't answer me? Because I'm thinking about how fuck we are. We'll get used to it. Oh, and we're not. So. Wow. She could have been our friend. And I could have figured this all out. Some. Yeah, two battle spaces right now. And y'all split the party. And we're split. Well, I'm about to make my way upstairs. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, the, the, the woman that is in the room with you starts yelling, Bella, we're under attack. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Kodiak. Make your move, buddy. We roll. We roll. Does Angel roll? We roll. 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 It just, I got oh, it does that. I got it. You got what? 20 is a hit. Alright, so she takes six points of damage. Again. I am at attack again with my mighty arrows. All right, you got 18 plus 8 is 22. That's a hit. 4 plus uh, 3 is 7. All right, so 7 points of damage. All right, so. Ophelia is going to go after Kodiak. No, it's fine. With her claws. Oh, okay. what did you do? Can I, can I, like, Believe it or not, she does not hit you. She just barely, you feel the air as her hands rake past you, but you are able to dodge out of the way. So, as Bella downstairs turns, her visage has changed from this nice old looking woman to a hag. <laughs> Day two. You are no that won't work. <laughs> Day two, you are up. Uh, is anyone within twenty feet of this this chick? Anyone as far as you guys? Yeah. You are all within twenty foot. Okay. You're in this all little right. bitty room. Mel's ass is there. Oh, I'm gonna cast that for you. So yeah, no fireballs, please. Yeah, I was gonna say that. So it says. Oh, this is always a joke. Heck with six. Okay, so roll your 20 and add six. Oh my god. You rolled a seven? Now it's about a seven. Seven is definitely not a hit. Thank you. Well, I still do half damage or something or other. Yeah, so on a miss, we do uh, half as much. Let's go. So I'll do four, two, four. No, no. It's four. Let's go. That's a two. Six damage. I got something going. Maybe it's a dice. All right. I mean, that worked for you. I got six. I mean, I fucked up with the 20. That's where I really went wrong. But... Halo says. Halo! Simple easy. Halo is going to rage. Okay. Rage. First Go ahead. Come on, man. Hopefully, we can kill this chick for fucking <laughs> Cody Egg that. Do it, honestly. I got this shit. I've been 13 hit damage, that bitch can't even claw me. She's like Tom Brady. She's like Tom Brady, I'm Matt Stafford. She's like, I'm going to fall. 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 I'm
Let me hit, hit with a long arm. Okay, ready, ready? I used my long sword. Alright, I'll use my long sword arm. Eight to hit? No, you do not hit. First attack is more than you. No, that one. Do it. Do it. <laughs> 14 does not hit. This is where the curse of Strahd ends in the fucking window. <laughs> All because you guys want to bounce. Yeah. Well, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Was that the end of your turn? All right. Annette is up. Go, go, go. No pressure. Hopefully I can do this. Hopefully I can at least get a I got some. 17. 17 is a hit. 17 plus 9. That's a hit. All right. Carry us. <laughs> I have a six damage in. Four plus four, eight damage. Eight damage. Okay, go ahead and attack your second time. Is a hit. Six plus four. How much is six plus four? Twelve. Uh, uh, no. Who the I fuck said. is your teacher? <laughs> six, plus, six, six plus four is Thank you. Is it too close? <laughs> <laughs> what is it me? Hey, no one can do that. Six in. You're up. <laughs> Skips just the ten, everyone's laughing. Like, <laughs> 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 Oh, All right, I'm going to use. Got it. Man, I'm not paying some I roll a. I roll an eight. Eight? Yes. Yas, yes. queen. Yas. Yes. Pass me, pass me the, tra- or the tower. Oh, 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 Use that reaction to move as far away as possible from us. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, please. I'm sorry. Your spell bounces off of her. Uh, Oh, god damn it. Wait, why? Because she has magic resistance. Even though it's a psychic? Uh Huh? It's psychic Psychic attack. attack. Yes. She has magic resistance. God she rolls advantage on saving throws. Oh. Her second throw was an 18. Which is harder. Oh, okay. Just so. stay away from magic. Just that means half more yeah. cheese yeah. is fucked. Yeah. 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 Our weapons don't do cheese. No, it just means I roll with advantage. All right. So Bella is downstairs, and she is going to, who is around her? Everyone except for Cody. (laughs) All right. She is going to cast Magic Missile. Oh, fuck. Please don't. I have 44 hit points. I should be fine. Fuck. Annette, day two, and Thixian. You each take four points of damage from Magic Missile. Four points? Okay, so I'm at 40. 40. Okay. Okay. Right, 
Arlo, you are up. Okay, one sec. Wisdom save for 14. Okay. I'm going to use both person. Wisdom save for 14. Yeah. You need a wisdom save? Yo. Yeah. Yeah. She fails. Nice. Okay, so she's paralyzed until she uh, succeeds on a wisdom save. Wait, what are Oh, that's, yeah. oh, that's right. You're. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Uh, go. Go. She go. still fails. Oh. Okay. So yeah, each turn she gets to. Oh, okay. So she paralyzed now. Dope. Y'all have a good time, hopefully. Yep. Turn it out. Thanks. Belcar. Okay. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to try to see. Yeah, but it has, <clears throat> she has to have under a certain amount of weights. So I don't know if this bitch has. It's like, yeah. This witchy bitch? That's good. So, 22? 22 is a hit. My first attack. So, going with my long bow again. Hey, we're rolling with advantage now because she's paralyzed. Mm hmm. I think so. Okay. Well, that's okay regardless. So, yeah. Okay. All right, so 1d4, so we have 12 points of damage on Bella. Yes. All right. And then I'm going to roll for a second. Okay. I'm attacking for a person. Oh, because once I start moving up toward you, that's going to end my turn. So I must do damage to Bell before I start hitting you. Okay. So we're we'll rolling with the band, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll re-roll out. 14. That's not hit. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hit. All right. So Velcar starts making his way up the stairs. And because this is your movement, it's going to take you another turn to get up to the landing where he's at with where she's at. All right. So let me mark that's one. Kodiak, you are up. Wait, he needs a towel. Yeah. Seventeen is a hit. <laughs> So you get five points of damage on her? Yes, ma'am. And then I'm going to attack her again. Okay. Uh, 12. Does not hit. So. so. Ophelia is going to attack you. And she is going to go with you for her claws. It is a hit. Um, you take five points of damage. Okay, so. Day two, you are up again. Mel Sassadero! Let's get her this time. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, and Bella is, or Bella is still disadvantaged, right? Yeah. 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 
five. Let's go. Five. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so eleven. There we go. It's eleven. You have advantage. Yeah, you do have advantage. Thirteen. Six, Nineteen. Let's go. That's Nineteen bad. is a hit. Uh, so now it's four of these boys. Yeah. Come on. One, four, five, six, and ten. All right, ten damage. And she's also poisoned, so she'll take damage at the end of her next round. All right. Halo is up next. Does not hit. What? Sixteen does not hit. Damn. They're locked in this bitch's world. No, the last they're chain both the same. <laughs> Someone got a fourteen and hit. No, nobody got fourteen and hit. I'm pretty sure they did. No, they didn't. I got. A, that was, that was yeah, so but plus six. Like no, no, he's a real oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, if 16 doesn't hit, no. 14 has not hit. I have it on audio, bitch. <laughs> Play it back. Well, it's gonna record now. I hit her once, which makes it so that she has disadvantage. Hold on. Skills? Not skills. Is there double disadvantage? Yeah. Hold on. She has disadvantage whenever she has attacks anything that isn't me, and if she does hit, takes half damage to whatever, or does half damage to whoever that is. Oh, that's good. So she basically has to attack me or does diddly squat. Nice. You said half damage, right? Yes. If she, what happens if she attacks you? It's normal. Okay. But that way, other people are getting hurt to the. Basically, yeah, Halo, they don't let me shoot. So, Annette. <laughs> <laughs> go on it, go on it, go, go, go. Can I have a towel? I think so. Carrie, I'll speak right there. Do not take a look. Jinx it. 15 plus, I'm going to try to use my crossbow. Which is plus 10. Okay. 15 plus 10? That's best to hit, right? You hit. Yeah, that's best to hit. Okay. So, what? <laughs> Six plus four. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what? Six plus four. Okay. Thank so, you. I get to roll again. You get to roll again. Fifteen plus ten again. Use my crossbow. Four plus four. Yeah, yeah. She's scary enough. Okay. I am my tank. Don't underestimate her. Super old. Definitely. Fixian, you are up. Um, <laughs> That's me. We're getting free pots. If I went right up to her, would there be about fifteen feet between me and them? No. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah. I was gonna run fireball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How small is this area? It's, it's small. Is there an area I can get to, like in a corner where I can hit her? No, it's a round. I could do about 48 damage right now. Some of you would die. 
Let's go. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm double checking. Five, ten, fifteen. The the entire dam diameter is twenty foot across total. Okay. But you have stairs that are going up one side that's taking up five foot of that, and you have ovens and clutter. So there's no way for me to get to very. Can I have a list of place? Nap one. Oh, yes. And so she's dumb in Spanish. She can't do it again. Right. <laughs> paralyzed, stupid. <laughs> so not only is she paralyzed, but now she is also prone due to Tasha's hideous laughter. Oh, goodness. Okay. So, seriously, while she can't attack, so now she can't attack at all. Right. <laughs> All right, so she is. Bella is going to toss for to try to get arms growl sized. She does do that. Damn it. Um, so, but, but she's still be prone, though. Right? She's still prone at the moment. I still have advantage yeah, yeah. Is it your turn? No, Aaron? but I got a poison okay. this bitch. Oh. Let's go. <laughs> Listen to him. I got a poison this bitch. <laughs> yeah, because it's the end of her turn. I was saying, this one's like taking all the beans away. All right, so <laughs> go ahead. Let's go. Arlo. Nope, you're not up next, though. No, no. I get it. She's poisoned from my milfs. Oh, okay. So go ahead. Let's see the damage on that. Already. <laughs> Let's go. And uh, two. So she takes six points of damage. All right. How much? Six. Wow. Yeah, because it has a secondary effect where poison's yeah, going yeah. next turn. No, I already, she's already poisoned, so I can't miss this one. Oh, all right. Yeah. Wow. 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 Arlo, you're up. Me? Yes. I'm going to do Guiding Bolt. Okay. Uh, roll 20. Yeah, this is... This no, is no, no. So it's gonna be plus six, so seventeen. Seventeen. Seventeen is a hit. Four D sixes. Okay. Oh, that's your cute. Okay. Four times. Three. Two. I got six. Six. It's nine. <laughs> Ten. Ten. Six. Let's go. Sixteen. Oh, yeah, the, I mean, it doesn't matter, but uh, the next roll against his target for the end of your turn has advantage. Yeah. Bell car. This, this turn is spent going up in your movement. <laughs> we'll get you up to the top of the flight. So you are now at the landing. You see Kodiak and the hag. You have an action. Go ahead. Reverse. You bite? Oh, so I'm up at the top. Yeah. I had to use your movement. No, I had to use your movement to get you there. All right, so let's go. So, uh, first of all, go, 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 Okay. Wait, so prone just means she can't attack? She, she's literally on the floor laughing. Nice. Do nice. you know the whole arm of TFL? Okay. Alright, roll for damage. So, 8 plus 4, that's 12. And we're going on a fellow yeah. on this one. Oh, no. But I'm also going to go ahead and use my action surge to try to attack her top. 12 on this hit. Okay. I'm to do it again. All right. Um, 
Oh, yes, no. please. Okay. As you're fighting outside or inside, from outside, you can hear somebody. Bella is sitting there laughing, and as she's laughing, she says, <laughs> That's my mother here in front of the tree. Oh, you're gonna die. Come on, we're covering. Yeah, come on. But as of right now, she's still outside. <laughs> I don't know. Get there, what's wrong with the door? Fireball. Yeah, okay. So. Kodiak, you are up. She's outside. You're safe. Oh, you're safe. Oh, you're safe. Oh, you're safe. Oh, you're safe. Hey. What'd you get? 18. 18 is a hit. No better. Get her right. Hmm. So five damage. Yeah. Alright. Fourteen does not hit. I didn't know that. Just so, upstairs, we're doing basically. Orphelia is going to go for an attack. <laughs> Velcar. I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw for me, please. You're smart. Eight. Eight. Suddenly. As you're standing there, your vision turns black, and then you see flashes of horrors before your face. These images include bodies, the remains of the tribe that you once were part of, your mother's body. Laying on the ground, bloodied and broken. Other images fill your mind. Things that only you know that scare you. You've never shared these fears with anyone else. For this duration, you are frightened. At the end of every turn from this character, you must make a wisdom saving throw. You take 17 points of damage. <laughs> Until you get a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, wait, exactly Okay. Please let this not be a less on death save. Day two. <laughs> You're up. So I'm gonna assume that chick outside's within 150 feet. Uh, yes. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, but if you see her outside, I'm gonna cast a uh, sleep on this. this on this bitch on the floor. Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Right, what do I need for my wisdom? There is nothing, nothing to save you. It's just five times D8. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, 20 HP or less, you get to put to sleep. If not, nothing happens. I have to tell you. Don't take that. Hey. Nothing happens. Oh, uh, wait, what happened when you tried to do? I tried to put her ass to sleep, but I didn't get enough. Halo, Roll you're low. up. 20 is ahead. Oh, <laughs> Eleven. This is eleven points. Okay. Annette, you're Annette, you were up. Twenty-three is a hit. Okay. Roll for your second attack. Nineteen. is a hit. A 
Annette. Yes! I finally killed one of those. Yes! Annette, how do you want to do this? What's the quietest way? What's the quietest way possible? Because I don't like this one. It's called arrows through the eye. Okay. No, quiet? Right through the throat. Yes. Oh, put an arrow through her throat. And then you reach down and you rip it back out and rip her voice box out. She is dead. Yeah. Is it look? It looks like a Dexian, you're up. Well, I'm going to go upstairs. Wait, okay. I'm gonna take my arrow and I'm gonna kinda of hide. It's gonna take two what, two turns to take it's gonna take this turn you're movement on this turn. Okay. And then your movement on the next turn. It's gonna take this turn, your movement on this turn, and then your movement on the next turn. Yeah. Arlo, you're up. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna head upstairs. On the next turn, you will have you'll reach, yeah. reach landing. Okay. Velcar. Give me a wisdom saving throw. Six. You take fourteen points of damage. Okay, I'm heading upstairs. I'll be up there soon. Oh, no. I got you too much. Fine. Uh, you're fine. Um, you're gonna have to do that. Yeah, you have potions? You got Kodiak. It. Everyone's coming back upstairs. Kodiak. You're up. Kodiak. Drink this. Uh, 18 plus 8. Uh, 26. 26 is a hit. Sorry. Uh, 3 plus 3 is 6. And then I'm going to attack her. Okay, it's a hit. going to go after you. I need you to give me a wisdom saving throw. A d20. Oh, Jesus Christ. All I got a 10. 10? Do you have any pluses, though, in your competition? Oh. So I got an 8. Yeah, plus 2. No, it's wisdom save. Oh, it's wisdom save. I was like, I reckon I can do or your vision goes black as well. Uh -huh. And you find your mind filled of being in a dark cave. Spider webs everywhere. The walls are covered with thick webs. And you see in the in the dis, in the crevices these large spiders that are probably 12 foot in diameter uh, you are filled with fear and dread as you watch their mandibles moving as it comes towards you you take Oh, jeez. Why should we I swear to God, if you kill me. 21 kill. points oh of damage. Let's go, baby. You think he killed him on here? 21 minus 34 is 21. What? Kill one. Yes, that's a 100, I guess. <laughs> well, 13. How many hit points do you have left? 13. 13. 13. Yeah. How much do you have? Me? Yeah. So you guys can come up and... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's headed up. So we go to... It's okay. Yeah. We have to, like, knock them out of it. Like, 
like help us get them out of the, the, the spell or not? Well, it's taking a little speed. So my guys is actually going to talk with the unless y'all kill her before. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, what are you doing? Am I already up here or? No. Because you had to go through your thing. So are you heading up? Yeah. All right. So your next turn, you'll hit the landing. Yeah, baby. What is Halo doing? Halo is going up. Going up as well. So, Annette, you are up. <laughs> that is a hit. Am I able to communicate with them still? Yes. Oh, keep her alive. Don't kill her. Just disable her. Okay. Annette, go for your second hit. <laughs> That's a hit. Yeah, I know. Two plus four, six. So you did six points. Vexian, mm -hmm. you make it to the top of the stairs. You walk in, you see Bella, or not Bella, Ophelia. You see Kodiak, you see Annette, and you see Valkar. What are you doing? I think I just figured out a way to help you guys. One of my spells negates her or negates fright. Mm. So I'm immediately going to go up to... Small. Right. Very long. Uh, hey, see, hey, Claire, see if you have heroism. Uh, All right, now let me check. The ability or? So, would it be an ability? Yeah. It's a spell. Well, then, yeah, I don't then. Um, All right, so, I'm going to go up to Vokar, cast heroism on him. All right. To simply negate the fright. It's a concentration, so all I have to do is activate it and then release it. Okay. So there's that. So you're no longer frightened. I'll get you next round, okay? <laughs> Can I also grab, pass him a, a, a health potion or no? Would that be considered an action? Or is this a bonus action? That's fine You're just passing it to him. Yeah, it's like so. I will consider it. I will allow it. Um, no, because an action would require her opening it, and so just passing it to him. I'm going to. I'm going to assume you grabbed it while you were running up. So okay, I'll allow it. Awesome. So you're good. I'll grab you next round. It's not my turn. I'll, I'm still allowing you to do a potion. Alright, what's the, uh... What are you doing? With the, what are you doing with our potion? Go on and scheme and scheme She's trying to... She's doing something to make them more effective. Oh, yes. The health potions were poisoned. <laughs> you got nine? Yes. You get 18 points of health back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. You get the what? What are you doing? What are you doing different? It's something that I picked up from Dark lunch break. Oh, uh, lunch break? Yeah. yeah. What's it do? Um, that's for me to know. How much did you get? You got 18 points. All right. Um, did we, we had Fixie in last, so Arlo, you were up. Yeah, boy. Okay, so I'm up there now. You were up there. Um, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds as a third level spell. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it's gonna go to Kodiak. Okay. And then, tell me how to do this quicker. Right, so, nice it's gonna be three D eights. <laughs> no, three of those guys. Yeah. Three D eights. Yeah. Three. Six. Six. All right. Plus three. So. Eight. Eighteen. Eighteen. Yep. Okay. Eighteen. Let's go. Yep. So he's one more turn. Melkar. 
That's a hit. All right, so long goes, right? Say what? I'm going to go just more. Okay. Plus four. So seven, eight, uh, ten, eleven. However, I'm not done yet. But wait. There's more. There's more. more. But wait. There's more. I'm going to expand with my superiority guy. <laughs> One and an extra one to their attack, so it's 12. Now I need you to do me a favor and make a wisdom save, bro. All right, the extra one you said, what's that? Yeah. So instead of 11, you did 12? Yes. So you need a wisdom from me? Yes. Well, your vision starts to darken. <laughs> and you see the, the corpses of all the children that you murdered oh, are coming no. after you with fucking knives and knives and fucking scissors. You are now frightened. Yes. <laughs> he just pulled that out of our first He I just pulled That was good. Gotcha. Uno <laughs> reverse card, though, man. That, that was, was good. good. All right. So. Yeah, that should really deter me to witness time. As Velcar is casting this. Kodiak, you happen to look out the window while Velcar is busy to see what was going on outside. You see the old woman. You recognize her as being the old woman you saw in the town of Barovia pushing the cart. She still has the cart with her, but she is grabbing a bag off of the cart and she's kind of muttering will you shut up and the the bag is like kicking and squirming and you hear muffled cries coming from it and with that it's your turn not yet she's damage did you do that time? Kodiak. <laughs> Give me a wisdom saving throw, please. Over here. Ain't gonna get 
So, for the rest of you guys, you have advantage on the attacks. And she has disadvantage on the saving throws. I'm going to cast until the end of my next turn. Okay. I'm gonna cast okay. casting Mills Acid Arrow, but as a uh, three level spell. Mills Acid. Mel. Let's go, Mills. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Twenty one. Okay. Four. Nine. Thirteen. Uh, okay, so 13, and she's poisoned. Yeah, so she'd be poisoned, so the next round she'll take 3d4s. Uh, she won't. Uh, she's dead. Day 2. Alright, wait, we're keeping her alive, right? Day 2. Nails, Day two. arrow, let's go. How do you want to do this? <laughs> Are we keeping her alive? We kill her? We murder her? I guess we'll keep her alive. Keep her alive? Alright, uh... Just drop her hands off. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna splash the acid on the limbs. So I got none of them. All the limbs. Don't make sure that that's or wait, is that what it is? No, it'd be. And then we're gonna set her up in front of the door. So the door's outside. She said, "Who names Matt?" No, you're not. What do you call it? Which is no one. Whatever you <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you knock her out. <laughs> I wish you would. Tie her up. I don't want to die. It hurts. Dude, you're fucking rude. Almost died. So, what are y'all doing? Alright, so I say we set up camp, right? I'll literally put. Well, well, we gotta let the kid out. Ah, fuck. I'm safe from the game. Uh, uh, <laughs> We're just gonna leave them there until we can fight this battle. We all die. I mean, they're fucked anyhow. Yeah, but they're just <laughs> but they're just <laughs> <laughs> so they can run. No, we got we got prepared. We wasted time on these little things. Look out the window. How much time? <laughs> how? Much? Yeah, yeah, we let the kids out. So you let the kids out, yeah. and they're standing there, and they're like. Thank you so much! Hey, hey, kids. hey kids, do me a little thing you did, like. What? Fucking hot! Kick this lady in the chest. Right now. Hey. Take, her, take your revenge. Don't kill her, but just kick her. So the little girl kicks the shit out of this woman. Oh, <laughs> Alright. Now that we've saved the kids, uh, I tell them. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna go reanimate your friend. <laughs> I'm gonna head downstairs. <laughs> That's a little bit. Can you reanimate? <laughs> you can't reanimate the witch? No, the, the little kid. Which yeah. little kid? The little skeleton boy. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna head down there. And I'm gonna cast yeah, Animate Dead. <laughs> Alright. He casts Animate Dead. Oh, okay. Alright, now I'm handing him. Apparently, I thought I had a crossbow, but I guess I fucking don't. So I guess I'm just gonna hand him my dagger. Oh. Yeah, we'll, we'll, let's go look at it. Why'd that have to be a I mean, the skeleton child would be handy after all. Or all he's doing is standing in the corner. You, you, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna. Uh, Check out the how approximately how many more kids are in this bone pile? You just see the the <laughs> one bone pile. <laughs> so said, All right. She said, "Full dead kid." <laughs> like, let's go. All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I finally get to use my ability. Uh, yeah, yeah literally. I I'm waiting for this really. all day. Yeah. 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 That's true. So we turn this place into a whole orphanage. <laughs> then I would have to. kids. Is that what you want? Oh, yeah, this is all I got. All right. So, Velcard, you have a disabled witch laying on the floor in front of you. The smell of warm blood still pumping through her veins. 
She doesn't smell the best, but the blood does. Am I in the room? So I need to watch? Yes. I don't think we're on attack. She's disabled. She is down to zero. Okay. I'm going to use my chain bite, but I'm going to lean in and whisper in your ear before I do. Uh, I'm not going to make the same face. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I, want, I want that to be her last thought. <laughs> Get dark. <laughs> Oof. And I was the dick. Just kid. I'm helping him. The kid was dead. Now he's gone. <laughs> and this is how much you recover? Oh shit, yeah, we all spassed her. Plus three, so four damage. So, bend down, rip yeah, her she got the out, and then just start consuming the blood as it comes. Let's go. So how is the rest of the party reacting to seeing Velcar? I fucking knew it! I'm just, I'm just like... Can I join you? Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Most people don't know. I'm crazy. I'm in Jersey. And Matt has, has obtained a new thing where he, he, well, he's no longer a human, so, and a bird of prey, so he could be a bit of a cannibal. Yeah, I mean, he has a bird of prey. She said that she smelled bad, though. So that means my girl is bad. Yeah, so she only smells yeah. like the witch only oh. <laughs> the witch only smells good to him because of the blood, though, so you might, the meat smells yeah, gross. She, she smells. I'm gonna point out that the witch is supposed to be playing. So we turn. Director's grown out. Yeah, we. Um, what are we? We're we uh, Like I said, I'm just like studying almost. I'm very, very, very intrigued by what what's going on. So I'm just like intently watching, soaking in all the information. Okay. All right. Now that we have all devoured, I guess. <laughs> I want to know from these two how it feels to be eyes with your kiss. What's it is? Yeah, I do. Put two and two together. Apologize to the little skeleton. Picture this moment. I'm so sad though. I'm like, you can apologize. Am I still addicted to the Yeah, fair. Yes. It was these two. You gotta kill the main bitch and then you'll. I think you won't get it. Wow, alright. So, I'm. Alright, so this one's gone. So, what are y'all doing? Fight these ass. Let's keep the feet, tell them to hide for now, and then we take care of the other witch and let them go wherever they want. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. And also so that we can actually, like, so that, let's say, Melkor can walk and stand on the trees and me can be walking. Is there a window? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm just saying, all right, so what are we doing? Are we going to shoot at her while you guys do? I'm going to walk out the window. I'm going to walk out the window. I'm going to be on the side of the fucking window. So is, is that what you're doing? You're going out the window right now? Yes, I'm going to go out the window. Okay. Do me a favor. Yes. No. He's going to get a, a attack of opportunity. <laughs> First of all, roll me a stealth. What? Yes, I'm literally standing like that. If this is the windmill, I'm like this. That's spider climb, so I can just walk with walls. On the windmills is turning. Any human that returns to you. You said stealth, right? Give me a stealth. So that's a 20. Alright, so you were able to sneak out the window without her noticing you. Um, you are standing on the side of the windmill. What do you do? So I'm going to attack. I have advantage. You have advantage. On both or the first attack? On the first attack. She's going to realize you're there for the second. 18 is a hit. 12 damage? Yes. Okay. Alright, go for a second attack. 13. 13 does not hit. Alright, so Morgantha does see you. 
What are the rest of y'all doing? Uh, I'm going outside. Are we staying inside? Y'all better figure something out. I want to go outside. I'm, I'm, I'm staying yeah, up in the high point. I'm going to roll me an initiative, Valkar. Yes. I'm going to climb. I'm going to shoot my uh, from that window. Can I have a power, please? 24? I got it. Okay. All right. I'm out. Okay. Yeah. That one. I'm very loud. Well, hang on. How are you going out? I guess she's the window. She can fly out the window. She can fly out the window. You. <laughs> Annette sneaks out. Annette is one. However, y'all are not out yet. Okay. So it's going to take y'all two turns. two turns to get out there. Yes. I'm just shooting her from the window. Okay, give me an, uh, roll me an initiative. I got a Eleven. So go ahead and roll for uh, okay. your attack. This is this is Oh, okay. <laughs> Ashley. Eight. All right, that's a hit. Okay, go ahead for your second attack. Is a hit? Four. Morgantha is going to start readying a spell. So that is going to be the end of her turn this time. Oh, okay, so it's going to be a hell of a lot. Alright, so we got to the shot. Go ahead. 14 plus 10, I'm going to use my cross. Is a hit. 6 plus 4. Very good. Don't forget, you have two hats. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Is a hit? Twelve. Yep. The rest of y'all are working your way. What? Halo stole the bottle. How many turns is it going to take for him to get from the bottom to work the spill out? He never went. He went up, didn't he? No. no. He we, never we went up. Going. He's been chilling out the door. Oh. Then he can go right on now. So is he able to? Get right up to her real quick? Yes, he's he's able to get to her. Alright, so do you want to roll initiative? Go ahead and roll initiative, but uh oh one. Okay. Five. Alright. Technically. It's just the rest of y'all are working on going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so <laughs> probably not. So we're gonna go ahead and roll for initiative. Thirteen. Thirteen does not hit. First hat fails, we got There you go. 18. That's a hit. Okay, so, well, I was going to the rage. Okay. So, okay. So, since I'm going back into rage, uh, I get plus two to any melee damage. Okay. So, it's plus, so it should be 1d8 plus 5. Mm -hmm. So, that's 6. You got a one? Yes. <laughs> but, wait a minute, now that, now that I've attacked her, though, if she targets anyone else, spirit, the spirits make it so that she has to disadvantage any attack she does, or any thing she does have. Right. Alright. That's all good. So, as day two, Fixian and Arlo are running down the stairs. You hear a cacophony of birds. You're not sure what is going on, but you can just hear a flock of birds making squawking, and you can hear their wings. Are they raven? 
You three, roll for initiative, please. You know what? Nineteen. Oh, Nineteen. Actually, about the uh, twenty-two. That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't you speak to other verbs? Fourteen plus two. Vexi and roll for me so I know where you're at in this. I I know because you're now. No, you can't. Huh? Sixteen. Would you get you got sixteen? I don't want to go now. Okay. So the three of y'all that can see what's going on, four of y'all, Halo. Belcar, Kodiak, and Annette. You see this from out of nowhere, a flock of probably 12 birds descend and start attacking Morgantha. Oh, yes! Let's go! The, this flock comes in and there is just birds dodging and darting and they're pecking and they're beating her with their wings and this is what and she takes she takes seven points of piercing damage sure. Holy shit. Your do some is she made of bread uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> I mean have you, have you seen her sharp Valcar you're up Going to be a hit. You got seven on the first one? Yeah, and then uh, we just got 50 plus eight. So that's yeah. Plus three. Six. So we get seven plus six. Uh, it's uh, seven four. All right, so what was the second hit? Oh, it was a six. We got seven plus six, so we got 13 damage. Okay. So she is going to use half her, her action for standing up. She does is not going to be able to make an attack. So not just standing back up? She is standing back up. Annette. That is a hit. Where is it? Seven plus four. I'm not doing that. Alright, go for your next. Nat 20. Critical hit. Roll your damage twice. <laughs> so you got six plus four on the first one? Yeah, and then the second one was seven plus four. You don't add the four on the second one. Okay. So it's 17 then. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Hey, you're doing some massive damage. I love how everyone else, all of these extremely tiny people, are. <laughs> they're, 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 you got the luck, like, right? Halo. And then there's me. Yeah. Oh, Halo is up. 
19 is a hit. Here, do me a favor. You hold that. Okay. Eight. Plus three. And guess what? Because this is a D8, that was the max. I know. Plus three. It's a low. A halo. Yes! <laughs> Wow. How do you want to do this? Bitch got to change. Yeah. Use that. I use my dumb sword. Okay. Use that. Okay. Okay. Use that. Okay. Okay. Use that. 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 Steal as many pots as possible. No! Oh my god. Still chill. Are they still under the effect of the pies? They're all under the effects of the pies. Yes, they're still under the effects of the pies. We should have investigated. There's still plenty of place for y'all to investigate. Is there like a methadone clinic somewhere? Yeah. Well, there's no one to bake the pies. Rehabilitation center. No. So. You guys can start making the pies. You see the cart, and you see. The bag that is squirming. And since Hale is the closest, he's gonna be. He er, grabs the bag and opens it up and just very unceremoniously just dumps the stuff out. And out dumps this little boy. You've seen this little boy before. He looks familiar. You believe you saw him back in the village of Barovia. At one of the houses that you observed Morgantha knocking on the door trying to sell pies. But what? So what? They sell their children for pies? It's a good okay. thing we killed the bitches. <laughs> so you have a little boy there to ask questions. Oh, that's right. What happened there? And he was going to look at him like, what happened? And this and little boy looks up. What the fuck are you? At this big metal man. I'm going to expect him too because I want him to see me. And he's like, I oh like shit. Both bodies and Halo's probably just covered in blood. And then I run over one of them and I take out And then he looks at you. And he looks you up and down and he's I like, know, little I died. No, I died. Uh, no, you're not dead. You just got saved by a bunch of randos from the street. And if you look, the birds, the the flock of uh, ravens are now perched on the eaves of the windmill. Do I have any bread? Does Sixteen have any bread? No. I turn to the ravens and I just say. Thank you. Rations. Thank you so much. I've got some rations, right? Can I get some of my, my bread rations? <laughs> the burpees? Want to get some bread? I guess you can. What's it called? I'm just going to like take a little uh, bit of the ration bread, just kind of crumple it up, just put it on like a, a, a windowsill to the birds. Good birds! The birds look at it. And they don't seem interested in birds. Now I'm going to be my birdie friend. Hold up, little boy. <laughs> but as Annette tells them thank you, they look at him and they acknowledge him and then they lift off and they fly towards the direction of the town of Vlaki. Yay! And then I turn back to the boy and I say, You're not dead. You're so, you just got saved by, you just got saved from a bunch of which maniacs. At which point he starts to cry, and he's <laughs> thank you. I thought she was gonna eat me. Well, she was gonna eat you, but we just cut her head off. So, um, <laughs> um, by this time, fixing the other she be at the bottom, right? Yes. There, but I, but I, but I, no problem. We just kind of, we kind of suspected that something was up there off with these witches. Um, mm-hmm. they, they've been coming to town. <laughs> How long started? And, uh, <laughs> they, 
the people that can't afford the pies anymore. They, they take my mom, she wanted pies and she couldn't afford the pies anymore. And she spent a whole lot of money on pies. And, and she gave me to them for pies. That's kind of a, that's a cheap move from your mom. Oh, are the other kids with us now? They should still be with us, right? They, they have come out on the heels of y'all. Along right. with the skeleton. Number two. Um, Along with <laughs> press our uh, day two's little skeleton <laughs> to oh, yeah. child. We're the window. Uh, huh? Right here. Yeah. <laughs> We're not leaving. Just let me know outside. What? So the little skeleton thing comes out. It's not a complete skeleton. It's like... <laughs> His name is Timmy. <laughs> His name is Timmy. <laughs> Timmy. Timmy. <laughs> He's a He's precious little thing. I'm giving him a crossbow soon. <laughs> 13 or something. Yeah. He's not tough. That's why I didn't bring him to the battle. I didn't have a chance, any of us. I'm leaving inside. Actually, your child had two hits. Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why? Okay. Because I had to use a child's, even though it's his system, uh, I had to use the child's staff. Fuck you. Wow. Um, so he's a beast. <laughs> he's, so a pro, anyway, he's a pro lion. Should you turn to the other two after you heard what this third child said? And he says, is that the same as what happened with you guys? Is something similar happened to you? Yes. And are, are all three of you from Barovia? Yes. And I'm guessing, due to the fact that you've been sold off to witches, that your parents probably don't want you. Oh. So, so what, are, what are your names? <laughs> the first little girl is named Austin. Okay. And the little boy is named Jimmy. Jimmy. Okay. Jimmy, can we pass for these? Jimmy. Right, so it's Austin and Jimmy. So, would you like for one of us to escort you back to Barovia, or would you rather us find some place that is better for you? The little little boy says, I don't want to go back. Okay. Not after what happened. That's understandable. There's a there's the orphanage back at uh Bilaki that we could take them to, okay. or... I totally fucked up their names, but okay. <laughs> or... I was looking, I couldn't find it, so I just said... Jimmy! Jimmy and Autumn. What, what are their actual... Their actual name... The little girl goes, actually, my name is Myrtle. His name is Freak. But we don't like those names, so fuck it. <laughs> 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 you know what? You know what? I was thinking maybe that this little girl is more that when we first met the girl, maybe there was the, the mother yeah. crying. I was thinking Anyway, no, Freak Freak is about seven, and uh, Myrtle is about five. Right. What about Timmy? So, <laughs> well, like I said, we can either take them to the, the Bullock Orphanage, or we can maybe see if one of the uh, Vistani, the Vistani camp with Arabella might be willing to take them in. The little girl mentions that she would like to go to someone else. Oh, okay. And she names two people she would like to go to. Okay. And this name, these names are very familiar to you. We're listening. They said, she says she would like to go live with Ismark and Irina. Well, we've got, well, in Barovia. I, well, Irina's with us, so. She's oh, a stay at home mom, any Irina. Um but look seriously though, what 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 are what will we be best for them? We could like said we could take them to the Sonic camp and see if they would be willing to take them. Well, or we them. Well, yeah, that or we you know, we can always just pass by to the hey willing to, if not, we can take the 
What do you think? Sound like a good idea? Yeah. About four. Good job, Zara. It's up to y'all to decide. Yep. Great. Right. Where think... We still need to investigate the window, though. That's just going. Let's see where there's not a no. Poor children. <laughs> Alright, so you you enter back into the first floor. Okay, the, the there's four floors to this windmill. Alright. You have exp- you have seen the first floor, you ran past the second floor up to the third floor, and then there is a fourth floor. Alright, so these witches are partying. Oh, window is like right through the foot. Yeah, so the top room is probably like the size of this fucking fridge. Yeah, <laughs> it's only like spacious, maybe eight foot in diameter. Which is my window into my crib. Come on in, I'll show you guys. So let's let's. You walk back in. You see the the barrels. You see. The cart, the chicken coop, the ovens. Um, you can investigate, Earl. Right. Okay. Let's take a look at the barrels. And barrels. Give me an investigation check. Now all the spooky stuff's done. I'm gonna let Hop and Long back out. Uh, he was quivering for a long time, <laughs> and now he's he's fine. He's doing good. I think you heard him all death. So all right, twelve. Um, you look into the barrel, it's got this greenish black ichor inside of it. Um, you have seen in your other adventures, you recognize this as if there's a scrying spell Mm -hmm. on this liquid that allows them to to scry on other places. But there's there's a demon demonic feel. Something is off. Very, very off. Cast unseen servants and I send his ass in. Oh. <laughs> That's fine. I would have. He's <laughs> yeah. Um. Um. Other than this liquid, this picker, there's nothing in the barrel. There's, it's just spitting out. There's nothing physically in this barrel. Um. However. Grim is like hunched on your shoulder and is just hissing at it. At the acre? Yeah. <laughs> now, there's also some cabinets in this room um, and various jars. All right, I investigate these. All right, the cabinets. All right. Um, you open one cabinet. It's full of bowls with herbs, bacon ingredients, including flour, sugar, some gourds of powdered bones. None this matters to me at all. Um, inside, the, hanging inside one of the cabinet doors it are dozens of locks of hair. Um... There's three small labeled containers that hold elixirs. The first one labeled youth is a golden syrup that magically makes the person appear younger and more attractive for 24 hours. The second one is labeled laughter is a non-magical red tea that infects the imbiber with cackle fever. The third elixir is a green milky liquid labeled Mother's Milk. Alright, I'm going to collect all three of them. Alright. Ew! So, in this room is also the chicken coop and the wooden trunk. Alright. 
Oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> oh no, that's not even that child. But. No, no, you're gonna love this. Okay. You're gonna love <laughs> this. I thought that the narrative would open it without being close to it. Just, right. just because of what you've been doing. Oh, okay, perfect. You open this trunk. It has. You look. It's got a whole bunch of little tiny holes in in the lid of it. Okay. You open it, and you see a whole bunch of beady eyes looking up at you. And you have a whole bunch of toads. Oh, I love it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh There's hundreds of croaking toads okay. when you open it there's toads hopping now yeah. and going everywhere awesome this right. brings me a lot of joy i laugh does that mean yeah. the toads for the pop is very happy to see his brethren free he's, he's doing his own thing yes i don't know toads yeah which is used toads yeah for like spells mm. I, so that's really all yeah. you're finding in there, other than there's a chicken coop and there's some chickens in this mess. All right. All right. All right. So you go up the stairs to the second floor. the The dirt caked windows allow very little light to enter this eight foot high chamber. So the the stone staircase continues up. Um, in this room, there's some pastries on the on the uh, things and bags of flour. You recognize that this is the the bone grinding room. There are, as you examine, there are bags of bones. There's the mill, and then there's bags of bone meal. Gotcha. I thought this is making you very happy. Is the dungeon master allowed for me to read skeletal abomination? No. No. All right, so floor three is where you found the witch. Um, you see discarded clothing that belonged to various children that these women have already devoured. Yeah, I'm gonna... There's a trap door in the ceiling that can be pushed open. You had the, the two cages that had the children in it, but they are now empty. You see crumbs and um, pieces of bread where it looks like they were probably trying to fatten up the children. A few crates there, the rest of them were empty at the time though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal some clothes for Timmy first of all. And try and make them as covered as possible cool. so people can't tell he's a bone man. Bone child. Bone, bone, child. bone boy. Yeah. So they said there's crates that haven't opened yet? There's crates. Well, they're cages, not really crates. Yeah, there's, there's no. There is a mattress, and there's a bed with a mattress that looks like it's the witch's mattress, but it doesn't look like it's been slept in for quite some time. Is there anything under the bed? Give me an investigation check. I got nine. You're feeling around. Okay. Um, under the bed, on the bed, you start feeling some lumps. The toads. In, in the mattress. <laughs> you kind of tear the hay, the straw mm -hmm. apart, and you find six pieces of jewelry. Ooh. It's cheap jewelry. They're only worth about 25 gold apiece. Okay. But there are six of them stuffed okay. inside this moldy mattress. Okay. Wow. Uh, take them. All right. So make sure you write that down. Six jewelry, 25 gold piece each. Put it on your paper for now. All right, I'm going to continue up to the top. Okay, so you pop through the trap door. There, this is the, the windmill's peak. You can see it's a dome chamber filled with old machinery that looks like it used to run the, the wind blades. 
There's not much room to move about. Light's minimal. And the only thing you see is some really old abandoned bird nests. <laughs> Oh, this no. All right. Bird shit. All right. <laughs> so nothing really about you. I mean, other than the children, there's really not much here. There are birds' nests. Are there feathers in the room? Yes, there are some feathers. What color are they? Black. So they're like blue or white or anything. They appear to be maybe raven feathers. Okay. Speaking of which, what what was with that other bird? Uh, I live before here. we leave, I want to set fire to the room. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's too many hours The end of the era. Yes. I'm setting it on fire and I want to be. Does the you know, Does the necromancer have fireball? Yeah, no, it's I currently uh, I might have a little I have a fortune to I think okay. I can. All right, so you, you, everybody, you tell everybody to get out, and oh, I heard the toads out. Yeah, all the toads have been gone now. The I chickens, led the, way. <laughs> the chickens have been released, except for the one that Annette ate. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, before we set a fire, I'm gonna drag the other witch body out. I'm just no. Is there much one? <laughs> yeah, one's melted. The other one's all good. So. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you think? Oh no! We're doing some necromancy. Uh, <laughs> Gotta have these bones. <laughs> so Velcar takes his tinder box. He lights a a flame to start his torch, and the windmill is made out of stone. <laughs> So it doesn't burn too much, oh, but boy. the wood inside does burn down. The blades, but there are, it doesn't completely destroy to the ground. There are still remnants, but. Can I then turn around and use Thunderblade to kind of. Sure. Yeah! Yes. Building. So you, you blast the stones all over the property there is nothing that resembles a windmill any longer i cannot guarantee that some of those stones did not crush some of these frogs or toads the toads are gone (laughs) and in the distance you see some monoliths (laughs) (laughs) the town of vallaki and you see the path that takes you back to the town of Barovia. Which direction are you going to choose? Oh, I first. Is it all good if I throw the dead body of the witch on Abba? Oh, I was not Fuck. Uh, <laughs> Can we collectively carry the dead <laughs> yeah, Shit, okay, I'm just gonna drag the dead one. Yeah, Timmy's got the legs. <laughs> Timmy's got a rope and a strong shoulder. <laughs> Halo's oh, Halo's 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 Okay. All right, so when we pick up next week, we'll be at the camp. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm going to keep to Halo and the dead body. <laughs> and that is how we end it for tonight. We did, we did well today. <laughs> it was the margaritas and the cake.